It's time for the second half of BYU football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's head live to the All-Pro Capital broadcast booth. Alongside Hans Olsen, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU down 18 at halftime. BYU's never come back from down more than 14 to win a game in the Kalani Sitaka era, but it did come earlier this year. BYU trailed by 14 at Arkansas, came back to win. In the Kalani era, BYU wins less than a quarter of its games when trailing at the break. BYU 9-28 and 28 when behind after 30 minutes. BYU 9-28 and 28 in those situations. They're behind here, looking to get back in it. They've scored an opening drive touchdown to begin the second half just one time this year. It came in at home versus Cincinnati a few weeks back. We'll see if the Cougs can make it two touchdowns to open half number two as they will get the ball to open the second half as shadows begin to creep across the playing surface here at DKR. Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Capacity 100,000, 119. Not a sellout today, but a big crowd on hand for UT and BYU. Will Stone kicking it off to Keelan Marion. Right to left, south to north here at the stadium. And that backspinner will be collected by Marion at the goal line. He'll take a knee. It'll be a touchback out to the 25-yard line come the Cougars on offense. 21-3 Longhorns. Keaton Slovis, 10 for 16, throwing it in the first half. He and the offense out on the field. Uh, Greg, a lot of bad starting positions for BYU, and some of that has to do with Keelan Marion trying to bring it out of the end zone. But right there, I think they talked to him at the half and said, Don't do if, it's, if it's at the goal line, just let it go in. Make sure that we're getting out at least to the 25 because there's been too many 10, 15-yard starts. It's one of the reasons BYU's minus 19 yards right now in average starting field position margin. Slovis is in the shotgun. Aiden Robbins aligns to his left by a yard. Tight end, two wides to the right. Slovis will turn, turn it into a boot, throwing deep and left, and it is broken up, intended for Chase Roberts. Coverage on the play by Ryan Watts. So it'll go to second down and 10. Trying to get a deep out there. Chase Roberts is going to turn at the numbers and head towards the sideline. About a 20, 25-yard pass down field. Slovis lets that thing go, but that's just well defended. It's kind of a jump ball and broken up. Robbins again with Slovis in the gun. Second down 10 for BYU from the Cougar 25-yard line. The hand clap, the belt high snap, the throw to Lassiter, and he's immediately tackled upon receipt of the football. It's a short gain of three out to the 28-yard line. Third down and seven coming up for BYU. Now comes the trouble down for BYU. You mentioned hands coming into the day. BYU, one of the lowest-ranked teams in the country on third downs at 124th nationally, 30%. Well, today they're at one for seven south of 30 percent they've got a third down and six from the BYU 29 yard line it's a really good job by Terrence Brooks on coverage right there we'll see what BYU dials up but they do have Isaac Rex who's kind of stacked behind that offensive attack we'll see if they can find him in any type of scene BYU does one for two on third and six this year trips including Rex to the wide side left side thigh high snap Quick throw to Robbins, makes the catch, but is immediately tackled for a loss on the play by Maurice Blackwell Jr. And the Cougars on a fourth down and eight will go three and out and punt it away to begin half number two. I know that's one of the frustrations when you're third and six and third and seven and you throw behind the markers. I know that's a frustration for fans, but you're trying to get it to your playmaker to let him miss. Make you're it asking Aid Robbins to make a guy miss. Yeah. In that case, Maurice Blackwell goes man-to-man and makes the tackle. Yeah, that's what you're hoping is that you could just break one tackle to go get that first, but I still like anything that's pushed at the sticks or just beyond the sticks. Brian Rico to put, boot it away for BYU. Rico, three punts for an average of 44. Long of 55. No pressure whatsoever. A high side wobbler will bounce in front of the returner and get a decent BYU bounce inside the 25 to the 23 of UT and out there. So Texas football first down and 10. And we were talking halftime just kind of amongst ourselves here, Hans, and and we were thinking we'd be surprised if they don't try and make this a Jonathan Brooks quarter and and just try and get him the yardage he's been used to getting in these games and, uh, and go to work a little bit because he wasn't really a workhorse in the first half. How many carries did you say he got in the first? At nine carries for an average of 5.3. So, you know, you're holding him just under his average per carry, but you are definitely got him under his attempts per game. You know, he, uh, he has 18 attempts. He's averaging 18 attempts per game right now. I guess you're... He said, well, he's at his average. Right at that he's halfway mark, isn't he? It feels like he was averaging more carries than that, though, per game as Murphy will dump it off to Brooks on the right side. 
And Jonathan Brooks has a seven-yard gain. He also... Yeah, yeah, so Jonathan Brooks coming into the game was... it. Uh, yeah, I think it's really close to that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's 18, right, right close to 18 attempts a game coming into this one. And he just puts up a lot with what yeah. he does. Yeah, you're right. 6.4 yards per carry. Getting you know, 117.9 per game. Handoff to Brooks, and Brooks won't get it. That's a third down and three, and he gets a yard. And he, he's really got kind of a, 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 a kind of a mincing first few steps. Like he really wants to see what's there before he makes a, a plant and goes. So Texas gets itself into a third down and two here from the UT 31-yard line. Surprised he still played that. And BYU's got nice Amahe in the middle, and they got Cravens in the middle, and they do a really good job of creating some, sorry, that was David Latu in the middle, creating some confusion and getting some push. Third down two at the UT 31-yard line. Three minutes gone here in quarter number three. UT by 18, 21 to three. An audible for Murphy backs up into the gun. He's got Brooks off his left hip. A sprint out to the left and a throw in the flat. It's low and dropped by Worthy. It's broken up, and UT will punt it away, you would wow. think, on a fourth and two from its own 31-yard line. And that play was there, but not a good throw by Murphy at all. Low and Worthy couldn't bring it in, so the punt team, Ryan Sanborn, is out. And BYU gets the ball back. So both teams giving it away on three and outs to begin half number two. So they just lined up with twins on the outside, and they took that slot receiver and broke him at the sticks to the, the sideline. And you just saw a great, great effort by Eddie Eckerd and a bad throw yep. for an incomplete. Yeah, that throw is there. That's, that, that's a first down throw to Worthy if the ball's placed right. And Malik Murphy with not a good throw at all off the fingertips. And with Parker Kingston looking to return the punt, he collects it at his own five-yard line, makes the first man miss, gets a good block, and then supermans it out to the 18-yard line where he's down there. It'll be first and 10 for BYU. Did he not? He's superman. It looked like he was picking up a lane, and, and they were going to go flying for a little bit, for sure. He did. A nice belly flop. All right, we'll come back. Uh, first and 10 for BYU inside the Cougar 20 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. North of Austin in Round Rock. It is day one of the Big 12 Women's Soccer Championship. Two games today with the 7, 10, 8, and 9 seeds playing in the earlier 8-9 game. Cincinnati defeated Baylor by a score of 3-2 on the BYU side of the bracket. Just about to get underway, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. And BYU will get the winner of that game on Monday afternoon. In fact, many members of the BYU soccer program staff were here today at DKR. The coaches and staffers on the sidelines and in the stands want to shout out Rachel Jorgensen and Tasha Bell and Steve Magleby and Brent Anderson, along with head coach Jennifer Rockwood, all here in Austin, enjoying some uh, BYU football before they take off and head to Round Rock to practice this afternoon and get ready for their Monday match. And so good to have BYU soccer in town on the same day that BYU football is in town to take on Texas. So shout out to all those folks I just mentioned and all the players. Good luck to BYU on Saturday against Oklahoma or Oklahoma State as the seventh ranked and second seeded Cougars look to advance and get to the dance and hopefully get as high a seat as possible in the NCAAs and bring soccer back to South Field for a few more weeks. So that is all coming up starting Monday in Round Rock. We are back to football action here at DKR. BYU trailing Texas by a score of 21 to 3. BYU first and 10 at its own 17 yard line. Slovis in the gun. Motion to trips right. It'll gaze middle and throw. Nice catch made by Keelan Marion on the out to the 35 yard line. That'll be an 18 yard gain. BYU moves the sticks. That's where. Houston found their distance it was right in that range you know 15 20 yard mark where you throw it in and you find that little cushion and Texas is sitting there in man on the outsides they're trying to press into man but you are able to work across the field and separate from your man coverage and find a nice open look pistol formation now Robbins behind Slovis Keaton will wave up Aiden to his right hip he'll clap the hands take the belt high snap hand off to Aiden Aiden Spun around to the 40-yard line, a four-yard gain, setting up a second down and six. Aiden Robbins on the handoff, and for Aiden, that is carry number 11 for 26 yards. BYU on the day, 16 carries for 47. I'll take Average that. of about three. I'll take that. I'll take that, te that Tava Teasa run or block right there. He just comes up the gap. Nice lead block and gets the, the yardage there. I'll take that every, every time on first down, Greg. We'll go back to Pistol. 
Split the tight ends. Rex left and Taase right. Trips left for Slovis. A short boot on a deep drop. The right-hander goes high and deep looking for Lassiter. And it is a flag on the play and a catch on the play. He did it again. Darius Lassiter hauls it in at the 13-yard line in double coverage. Not sure how he came up with it. The official threw the flag for P.I. And Darius makes the catch anyway. Spectacular work. And BYU first and 10 inside the 15-yard line. Pass interference, number two, defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. Darius Lassiter is just going to get on a deep post run. He's on the outside far flank, and he's just running deep. Turns into the post, and the safety comes over to try to make a play. He arrives just a second early and puts his shoulder pad into Lassiter, and that's why Greg thought, what? Crazy catch because you're catching that with the defender in your stomach and still coming down with it. No catch too difficult for Darius. Slovis, shotgun, motion, Marion. The give to Keelan on jet sweep, and he is upended in the backfield as there was traffic around the exchange. A loss of two to second and 12. BYU on a 47-yard completion. Slovis to Lassiter. Set up first down inside the 15. It'll back it up to the 17, creating second down and 12. In fact, loss of three to second and 13 at the Texas 16. Let me tell you, that's self-imposed traffic. That's a bummer. That That is absolutely a bummer. I, I don't know if Aiden Robbins thought he was supposed to take that carry, but as Keelan Marion was motioning across and took the carry, he ran into guy, right? Aiden Robbins, yeah. and it kind of blew up the play. That's a terrible miscue for the offense. No motion lasted her this time. Shotgun snap. To Slovis, he'll fake left, screen right. Lassiter makes the catch, shakes off one tackle, has the 15 tripped up there. Ankle slap at the 15. It'll set up a third down on about five or six. And you got to think here that Aaron Roderick's in four down territory and not looking for another field goal as Texas has a player down between the 25 Time and 30 the yard line. Injury. You know, in a field goal situation, at least you get yourself to a two score game. And, and leave yourself an opportunity to advance a touch. I could see Aaron Roderick getting a little bit aggressive. I could see him playing a more conservative. I, I think here, though, you know, you're third and 11, and we've talked about this, Greg. How, how tired is everybody of seeing third and 10 and long? It, it can be really frustrating. Um, Darius Lassiter has come down with some big-time catches. We'll take a break on this injury timeout. 9.02 to play in the third. Texas 21, BYU 3. Cougars knocking on the door next on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This big skin scoring summary is brought to you by your Utah pork producers, Daly's Bacon and the National Pork Board. Utah pork producers provide hundreds of jobs in Utah while producing safe and nutritious pork, real pork raised by real Utah farmers for real Cougar fans like you. For more information, follow Utah Pork Producers Association on Facebook and Instagram. That last Cougar scoring drive ends in a 32-yard field goal by Will Farron. 68 yards, 7 plays, 3.43 off the clock. So the good news, hands BYU's now 23 for 25 in the red zone this year. The bad news is both red zone scores today are field goals and not touchdowns. Got to get those touchdowns, and this defense has got to get another stop. The interesting thing, you and I were talking about this, Texas offense is making it look harder than they really need to make it look. Right now, Jonathan Brooks has 48 yards total. This team has 58 yards total rushing. This is an offense that puts up 180 yards rushing a game. And right now, BYU's got them stopped up at 58. So they're doing a great job. And I, I want to say, too, that, you know, watching David Latu and watching, I saw Joshua Singh on a really nice tackle. He had a nice stop. Uh, nice Amahe doing it again in the middle. They are making it difficult to run, Greg. Right? We're still halfway to go in the third, but Texas averages 468 yards a game in offense. They're at 169. They're 300 yards shy of that number. Yet they lead by 15. BYU's kickoff collected at the goal line. Coffin corner by Savion Red. Red gets out to the 21-yard line and gets hit on the boundary. It'll be four yards shy of the 25. First and 10 for UT. Almost exactly where Keelan Marion fielded it yep. and brought it back out to the 15 or so. Um, again, just let that thing go through the end zone and get yourself an easy out to the 25. Instead, 21-yard line. Longhorns first down and 10. Malik Murphy in his first start. 
has been just okay and sometimes not even that. So 11 for 17 for a buck 11. One touchdown, one pick. 127.2. He's outrating Slovis right now. Keaton's at 111.6. But Keaton settling in after a pretty difficult start throwing the football. Murphy takes that distinctive crouch. Five yards back of the snap. Hands off to Jonathan Brooks. Brooks has not had a lot of open space runs. He gets a simple two-yard stretched out run to the right side. Second level runs aren't happening. Big gaps aren't happening for him. BYU's done a really nice job on Brooks. Well, that was Ciali Acera, and he was the player to watch as we got going with our pregame. Ciali Acera is just going to float, float. He's going to take two steps to his left, and then he's going to fire the gap, and he's going to make that tackle. They're going to bring him out, go to nickel here, go to a 4-2-5 with Acera checking out. Second down, eight, make it nine. At the Texas 22, the give is to Brooks. And there's the second level run. That's the one we haven't seen all day. And now we do. Brooks to midfield, 45 and 40 yard line of BYU. The biggest run of the day by far for Jonathan Brooks. His long run had been 15 yards. And that goes all the way from the Texas 22 to the BYU 40. A 38 yard run for Jonathan Brooks. That's frustrating because BYU shows up with a five-man box. There's five guys sitting in the box, and they read it and react right through the guard and center gap. On one play, Brooks more than doubles his yardage. What do we have? Timeout, BYU. This is their first of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. So we'll stay right with it, and Jonathan Brooks now goes to 12 carries, 87 yards on a 38-yard run. So almost doubling his yardage on the day. 7.3 yards per tote now after the big run and Texas surpasses BYU in offensive yardage on that one play. 208 now for Texas, 183 for BYU 21-6 on the scoreboard. BYU was outscored 14-0 in the first 7-3 in the second has outscored Texas 3-0 in the third. Can the Cougars keep the Longhorns off the board in quarter number three? Longhorns have a first and ten now at the BYU 40. The, The defensive personnel group that they had on the field on that big breaking run with the five men in the box. They took Ciali Acera off the field and I think they were expecting a pass. They pushed everything to the outside and they dropped a couple of safeties and they, there was just too much room to run in the middle right there for Jonathan Brooks. All right, here we go. Malik Murphy as we're back in from timeout. In the gun. They give middle to Brooks. Brooks is cartwheeled at the 37 after a gain of three. That puts him to 90 yards on the day. And you go back to your personnel group that takes on the run. You've got your three solid backers, and you still have Nice Amahe on the field. You've got David Latu out there, Tyler Batty pressing down the gaps. That is your run-stop defense that's done a really good job. Brooks coming into the day fourth in rush yards per game nationally, sixth in all-purpose yards per game, 13th in yards per carry. He's off the right hip of Malik Murphy on a second down and seven. Murphy throws to an open. Jonathan Brooks in the right flat. First down and more. He's tackled at the 20-yard line. On the numbers, a gain of 17 on second down and seven. And so Texas now into a red zone possession. The Longhorns one for two inside the 20 today. Ethan Slade on the tackle for BYU. One of the red zone possessions for UT today resulted in a fumble by Malik Murphy on first and goal from the 10. Now it's first and 10 from the 20. Longhorns 21 and BYU 6 with 544 to play in quarter at number three. They go pistol now with Brooks trailing. Murphy, the stretch handoff to Brooks, stops, looks for the corner, right side, and is brought down after a gain of five, giving him six to the far boundary, nearly a seven-yard run on the final spot there. So that was not a lot of room for Brooks on the sideline, but uh, tiptoed it for a gain of almost seven. Malik Murphy was shook up on the play before on that Max Tooley blitz. Max rotated out of that defensive backfield, came in on the blitz and got a good hit on him. Brooks checks out, Baxter is in, C.J. Baxter. On five carries for 22, is aligned off the right of Murphy. He'll bend at the knees, put his hands before his chest, clap and receive the snap, and the give to Baxter. Baxter grinds to the 10, and that'll be very near the line to game, and it could be another third and inches for Texas. We've seen a handful of third and very shorts for UT today. But on third down, Texas's average third down distance is half that of BYU, roughly third and eight to third and four for Texas. And what's their conversion on that? On their third down conversions, just they're four for six right now. Yeah, see. Taylor. They're going to say it is third down and less than a yard. So, again, third and short for UT, just outside the 10-yard line. And so many teams just love to get back in the gun. Now they're going to go Wildcat 
and put Baxter in direct. No, is it Savion Red in direct snap? Savion Red takes the direct snap and got there. The pile pushes with Savion Red on the direct snap. The running back gets inside the 10 to the 6. And the pile finally goes down around the 5. So they motioned out Murphy, who does look a little hobbled, as Hans mentioned. They put running back Savion Red in direct snap. And he took it forward for the first down. First and goal, UT now at the BYU 6-yard line. They'll spot it at the 6, first and goal. That's just a scrum. He just runs right into the right side of his offensive line. And everybody keeps pushing. BYU's defense has got to keep playing because he was just still pushing and there were guys still standing around watching. Still Savion Red. Still Savion Red in the backfield. He'll clap, receive the snap, run it to the right, cut back up field, gets inside the five to the three. And he'll be dropped down there. That was first and goal from the five, got to the three. They like the build of Savion Red. 5'10", 214. Does have a touchdown run. In fact, it came... I think it came as uh, Texas was trying to take care of uh, Houston last week after taking that big lead. They have been sending the direct snaps back to Savion, but they've kept Malik Murphy on the field. He's been lining up at the wide receiver spot, and now he goes back out to the wide receiver spot. Savion red. Stays in the gun. Baxter to his right. Little option feel inside, not going anywhere. Thrown down at the two. Texas into short down issues again. Wakely on the tackle. It'll be third and goal from the two. The fans, you can tell, start to mumble and grumble and wonder, what are we trying to do here? Well, it, I think that Malik Murphy got roughed up when Max Tooley hit him on that. Yeah, well, he's, he's stayed in the game, but he's not been involved. They're going to pull Red and Sanders out and maybe put Murphy back in a quarterback or at the quarterback position. They will. They have. So he'll be in pistol now. Third and goal from the two. Baxter. Behind Murphy. Now comes to his left hip. A short sprint out left. A throw to the end zone. And it's broken up at the goal line. Intended for Adonai Mitchell. And breaking it up is Camden Garrett. And now Texas a decision to make. On fourth and goal from the two. And they're going to say go for it. So Texas. Ooh, looking to put up a bit of a hammer down here, but this has been a pretty shaky team in short yardage today. I, I don't like the play call to put it in Malik's hands. Yeah, after well, they're going to keep BYU in the game if they don't score here. Well, he tries to flip it out to just an out route, and you had Camden Garrett in perfect coverage. That was nearly intercepted again. 21 to 6, zone. Texas leading it, and a fourth and goal from the BYU 2. Murphy, gun. Baxter, right hip. There's a motion man. A throw in the right flat to Sanders. Sanders didn't get there. BYU holds him short of the goal line. A tackle at the one-yard line, and Texas will give it up. On downs, BYU stays in the game. We'll have a 99-yard field facing it, but Texas has not been able to put the hammer down against BYU today. That's the second time they've had a goal to go at the 10 or inside and have not scored a point. Well, you're trying to get Tyler Batty out of that place. You motion inside, and then you're trying to block Jacob Robinson with your receiver. Jacob Robinson defeats the block and comes up and gets into the legs of the ball carrier and trips him up. The ball carrier tries to extend and can only get it out to the one-yard line. Jacob Robinson, that is a big play right there, son, holding him to another empty possession in the red zone. That's 78 yards, 11 plays, 548, 8 off the clock for nothing. Texas comes up empty. Multiple opportunities to put it on BYU, and the Cougs will not let them do it as Keaton Slovis throws out of bounds and out of room as he ran across the back of the end zone to the near side and found Cody Epps, but well out of bounds. Just a rescue throw. It'll go to second down and 10. Earlier in the game, first and goal from the 10. Murphy fumbles. They get nothing. And here on a fourth and goal from the 2, Murphy throws complete to Sanders, but short of the line to gain the goal line. And BYU takes over. Can the Cougars make the Longhorns pay for their failure inside the 10? Slovis in the shotgun with Aiden Robbins off his left hip. Rides to either side. Tight ends to either side. The handoff middle. And Robbins does his job. Gets outside the 5 to the 6 to the 7. Setting up a third down and 5. BYU needs to get 5 or will punt it away from its end zone. So third some- down and 5 for BYU. And here's the down of the day. BYU's one for nine on third downs today. And the only third down that BYU converted on this day was a third down and four. 
And this will be a third down and six on the spot from the six-yard line. Need to get to the 12. And that was a pass to Lasseter. That was a just a drag route to Lasseter on that one third down conversion. They'll go empty for Slovis. Trips to the right, twins to the left. Texas will bring four. Slovis has the pocket collapse, scrambles away from it. A hold, if there's a hold in the end zone, this could be a safety as it's a thrown incomplete on the right side. The flag flew with Keaton in the end zone. What will the call be? Here it comes from referee Derek Anderson. Will it be hands to the face or something else here? Sarkeesian is in conversation with the officiating crew. Personal foul. Illegal use of the hands. Hands to the face. Number 61 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Okay. So it does go against BYU, but it's not the kind that will give you points in the end zone on, say, a holding in the end zone. Yeah. And so it will be BYU punting it away from its end zone. And so the uh, Cougars keep the Longhorns from scoring from the two-yard line, but the ensuing possession goes south, and Rico will now have a short approach with Riggs about to snap from the six-yard line. We'll see how hard Texas comes here. They haven't put any pressure on Rico all day today, Hans. Oh, Rico awaits the top of the X in Texas in the north end zone. Two hour left again. No pressure. And Rico high but short. Near midfield, a fair catch is called for and made by Xavier Worthy right at the 49 of Texas. It'll be a 51-yard field for the Longhorns. We'll stay right here with it. So, one minute even to play in quarter number three. What BYU's done is keep Texas off the scoreboard in the third quarter. 3-0 BYU in this quarter. 21-6 Longhorns still lead the Cougs. In the final 60 seconds of this third stanza. I can't believe the third down struggles. This is as bad as I've seen it. You know, I, I know that today. I know that BYU has really struggled in their third down offense. As I mentioned, coming into this game, out of 93 third down attempts, BYU had only converted on 28 of those. That's 30% conversion rate. And coming now into this game, it's even underneath that 30%. Third down struggles have been really brutal all year long. And BYU struggles on third down defense as well. BYU ranks 100th nationally in third down D. And Texas is 5 for 8 today on third. The handoff, C.J. Baxter coming left, and he loses yards. BYU's defense is keeping the Cougars in this game, down 21-6. to Texas yet to get 250 yards. A team averaging almost double that for a game. A loss of one on the run to Baxter. Texas has run for a buck 18 to BYU's 50, so BYU's uh, suboptimal rushing numbers have returned today. Malik Murphy in the gun on a second down and 11 from the Texas 48. The motion man's Whittington from left to right and back to his left. High snap to Murphy. A deep drop. Assesses options. Has a man downfield and making the catch at the 35-yard line of BYU is Jatavian Sanders. The tight end elevating over the defender and moving the sticks. As back on defense was Crew Wakely and Sanders with the catch. First and 10, Texas at the BYU 35 coming on a second at 11. And that'll be the final play of quarter number three. Texas does not score in the third quarter. The BYU will be down 15 going into the fourth on the new skip. BYU Sports Network.